Welcome to another segment of Interviews That Matter. I'm your host Raj Mehta. Friends, in this segment, we bring those guests who influence our lives. This includes elected officials, policy makers, heads of major organizations, and other dignitaries. It is my sincere hope that the knowledge brought in by these people will help our community. Today, our guest is the Chief Operating Officer and Chief Executive Officer of Long Island Power Authority, Michael Harvey. Michael Harvey has been an acting CEO for last two years, and Long Island Power Authority is about $3.7 billion utility, uh, the, one of the largest utility in the country. Let's meet Mr. Harvey. Mr. Harvey, thank you so much for taking time to join us You're quite today welcome. here. Really appreciate it. Uh, first, you know, you are the, you have two, you wear two hats. At well, IPA. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Long Island Power Authority, and uh, since our chief, uh, chief Executive Officer resigned a few years ago, I've been filling that role. So I've really been doing both of those things at the same time, uh, uh, combine the job really for now, and uh, lead the organization. So how many hours do you have in, in a day? Well, it's we a, have it's only a, like it, limited really, number. Really, it's a it's a 24 by 7 job. It's something interesting with all utility workers, just not me. Right. Is uh, we're very used to uh, middle of the night time activity, weekend activity, activity while we're on vacation. That's the way the utility business is. Uh, but you know, life is a very large business here on Long Island, and it takes a lot of attention day in day out. Uh, and uh, really, uh, the job does not have hours. It has long hours. It's a long hours, right? Yeah, because, you know, like, what is your responsibility, primary responsibility as COO? Well, as you know, chief operating officers, day to day operations. Day to day operations. Uh, you know, we have our contract with National Grid for the day to day service, and that's the direct contact with our customers, and I directly oversee that contract. Uh, we, of course, have the, the performance that we have to monitor out of the generating plants and the energy efficiency programs, the purchasing of energy and fuel. Uh, we have financial operations inside of the company. Of course, a large portion of our com uh, company is around managing the finances. And uh, uh, it's the it, normal types of things you'd expect in a very large business, about $3.6, $3.7 billion of revenue per year. Uh, and uh, you know, correspondingly high uh, cash flow and bills. So, chief operating officer is keeping all of that running smoothly. Uh, chief executive officer sort of goes the the direction of then what is longer term uh, strategy. Uh, so we've been executing that throughout the year, the past couple of years of of uh, fundamental change for LIPA. So you must have a lot of challenges in. Yeah, it's all, all challenges all day. You know, we, we, we obviously try to have a business plan in place, strategies in place. We, uh, we execute on those strategies. Uh, none of it's a secret. Most of it's very open on our website. You can go and see what we're up to from a standpoint of uh, long-range energy strategy with our energy plan. Uh, and that's really our fundamental business plan there. Uh, most of what we do is very public uh, in, uh, be because our board operates in a public venue with public meetings. And of course, uh, as we're talking about budgets each year, we have hearings about those budgets. So it's, it's all out there in front of everybody to see. So can you tell us what are your plans for to keep the utility rates under control? Well, sure. Uh, actually, the interesting thing is uh, most people do not know where we are from a rate standpoint. We are at the same rates these days as we were in 2005. No. Natural gas prices have come down nicely. We've been able to keep the variable costs under control. So we're charging on a per kilowatt hour basis, we're charging about what we were for two, in 2005. The reason most people don't know that is almost all of our customers are using more electricity than they were. And that goes to our efficiency programs, which is our number one bill control program. Teach customers and, and help them to bring their usage down and that'll help bring the bills down. At the same time, you may have heard that we're really basically restructuring our generation portfolio. Uh, we have our contract with National Grid that's expiring. Uh, the, we are uh, have negotiated a, uh, a ongoing agreement with. We'll be bringing that to our board for approval very soon. And uh, that has a better cost profile than the last contract and gives LIPA better controls over what's going on and but uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and on top of that then we've gone out in the market to look for newer modern generation uh, to start looking at re upgrading the portfolio here on Long Island 
everything we do along those lines looks at what's the cost, what is it going to be, what does it have to be, what can we get it down to. Mm -hmm. Obviously when you start to build new plants and look at new uh, sources of power on, on Long Island, the tendency is if you don't do that right, that it becomes sky high and we can't do that. We have to really look at the cost and try to keep the cost down while we address uh, modernizing the fleet. So where do you buy your natural gas now? I mean for... Well we buy it off of the transmission, natural gas transition, trans, uh, transmission market. So any number of suppliers for that. Uh, you know we buy, it's a market-based commodity. We buy it both long-term and short-term as best benefits the customer. Uh, each and every day we're buying gas and electricity and oil uh, for when we're burning oil, uh, diesel fuel, jet fuel, all the different fuels that the, that the generators use. And we have a fairly sophisticated operation that buys that at the lowest possible cost, turns it, then puts it into the plants that we, are, that we have under contract and turns it into electricity. So there is no particular contract with somebody that you have to buy from them or something Again, like that? Again, it's from the market. From the market. Uh, the gas, dra gas transmission market is fundamentally de uh, deregulated it's an open market and we can buy uh, both long-term and short-term on the open market for various numbers of parties. Mm -hmm. So last year, you know, we had a Hurricane uh, Irene and Hurricane Irene had uh, a lot of devastation on Long Island and, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, issues, you know, because people were out uh, without electricity for a longer time. Uh, so obviously, you know, a lot of lessons must have been learned since then. Uh, so can you, I mean, communication was the biggest issue, really. So right. Well, anytime you have a big event like that, customers just, uh, just do not want to be in a position of having a multiple day outage, and we don't want to have customers in that position either. Uh, you mentioned it was a very large event. Of all of the utilities in the area, we had the largest percentage of customers that were out of service because of it, because we took the full brunt of it as it switched from a hurricane to a tropical storm. It uh, detensified somewhat, but spread out somewhat. So it hit us from end to end on Long Island. It wasn't a small hit, it was end to end hit. And we had over 18,000 uh, locations with trouble that we had to go and do significant repairs. And that's putting wire back up, putting poles up, taking the tree down that was on the pole. Huge logistics operation. So we've looked at that ourselves. Uh, the Department of Public Service, which is the staff portion of the Public Service Commission, came in and looked at it from a standpoint of, of uh, a, a statewide uh, uh, a review of all the statewide utilities. Because remember upstate, not only did they have Irene, but then they had Tropical Storm Lee right behind it, which caused combined caused tremendous amount of flooding. So a tremendous natural disaster. Uh, we uh, did a pretty good job from a utility standpoint of, of restoring. And that really didn't come under uh, criticism from a standpoint of the reviews that were done, but it still it was more than our customers wanted to tolerate. So we always have to look at trying to have the shortest possible uh, outage time, even in a significant event. But people have to understand, for a big storm, for a hurricane, for a tropical storm, it's going to be seven to ten days. No matter how much we gear up and put people on it, you know, four to five thousand linemen in it, uh, still we have all those man hours of work to do. What we identified ourselves during Irene and, and the follow-up reviews uh, all confirmed is that we really need to update our communications. We need to be able to tell customers better exactly when their power will be on. We need to be able to set expectations better up front. Uh, a lot of our customers didn't understand, have never seen this type of de devastation. So, you know, we're being clear about it. Think about seven to ten days. That's the expectation to set up up front for if you see a hurricane coming our way. Now, half of our customers will be restored, you know, in the first uh, two to three, four days. Uh, but the other half that are in the, in the more damaged areas will take longer. So we've made a lot of changes since then. We've upgraded our computer systems that give us data, and then we can pass that information along better to the customer. We've updated our outreach. We've updated uh, the, our uh, contacts and our relationships with the villages. We put more people out on the street, even during non-hurricane times, to tell civic groups, uh, village officials, county officials, here's what you can expect from us and, 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 and look for the best ways to work with them. We've dedicated crews in the future to uh, working right with the townships, uh, departments of public works, and the county departments of public works to get the streets and roads uh, cleared as fast as possible to coordinate that better than we did. So every, one, every time we have a major instance, as I'm sure most uh, large utilities do, we look at it and say, how can we do better? We know our customers demand better, 
and I think we put a lot of really cutting edge uh, uh, new processes in place to be able to respond better. At the end of the day, people are still going to want their lights on faster than we may be able to get them on, and they're going to want more information than we may be able to give them, but we'll be in better shape next time around. So if I am a customer, I'm, I'm a customer rather, you know, I'm not if I am a customer, I'm a customer. And if I, my lights are out, I mean, I know that you have now apps on the smartphones and everything uh, that I should be able to report to you without even going through my landline because landline might be down also. That's right. And one of the problems we ran into in Irene is the phone system inbound to our call center got bottlenecked. Right. Not, no problem with our call center, but the telephone communications in, inbound uh, got constrained. So we have the, the normal call center you can call by way of phone. Uh, you know, the numbers are on the bills. They're on our website. Go to our website if you have access. Uh, you know, people can take the, either have access to their place of work or through uh, their smartphones or through their laptops, uh, uh, www.lipower.org, and then go to Storm Center, and uh, you, can rep you can see the status of an outage. You can go to the, the, my account portion of the web page, report an outage, uh, use our texted in service, and uh, you, you go, on the, go on text, uh, type in to the numerical equivalent of my LIPA, uh, just convert my life into numbers uh, and type REG, R-E-G for register. It'll ask you for the phone number on your account and then you're registered. And the next time you have an outage, you just text in out and it'll acknowledge that you're out and as it updates that outage, as we get updates, you'll get text updates. And the last portion that we put in place is the uh, is the, uh, you mentioned smartphone app. Uh, really a, smart f uh, a web formatted smartphone page uh, that right now has the capability to uh, give and take information about outages. We'll expand that to other self-service uh, opportunities as, as we develop that. And uh, then an enhancement we made on our web page is uh, we've had a web page with the outage map for some time showing the outages. We've really beefed up the capability there for larger storms. And at the same time, now you can go and you'll see a little triangle where your outage is. Mm -hmm. But if there's a crew assigned, this is important information for customers, right. if there's a crew assigned, there's a little hard hat on that triangle. Okay. So you know there's a crew assigned and you click on it and you'll see what we're expecting as a restoration time. So mm -hmm. on our electronic media across the board, we've beefed up our capabilities. Now we don't take uh, outage information on our uh, social media. Okay. But we are giving out a lot more information, preparation information, status information, updates, helpful information on both Facebook and Twitter, even a uh, normal sunny day. So going to our, our LIPA accounts on it, both, both Facebook and, quit, and Twitter, uh, you know, uh, being part of that uh, mm -hmm. community uh, will also help you to get uh, updates both before storm and after storm. So if I have a smartphone and if I text my LIPA and space REG, automatically my phone is registered? So that's for the text. For the, any, for the text, te right? any phone, any device that does texting, right. uh, the numerical equivalent of my LIPA, uh, REG for register, it will prompt for your phone number that is on your account. Okay, okay, okay. All you right. can optionally put your account number in, but most people know their phone number before their account. And then it'll, it'll acknowledge that back, and then next time you have an outage, just text out to uh, the, the service, and it'll acknowledge your outage, and then it, when it knows, when our system knows either the restoration time or the or we believe power has been restored, you'll get a you'll get a text back. Okay. And if power has not been restored, you can acknowledge that, say power has not been restored, and that keeps the outage alive in our system, so that we don't have the crew drive off and go to the next outage. We know we can stick in the neighborhood and to go ahead and, and address your particular problem. So now you have a better communication system between the municipalities and, and LIPA, right? I mean, that's, right. The, for storms, that's a key for it. For storms up Traffic front, we've, pr we've presented, we've had people uh, in, in, uh, in front of, in one shape or another, almost every uh, village, town, county official uh, in all of Long Island to uh, educate them with the storm process, restoration process, to describe what's very important, and that's oftentimes we have to rebuild the system from the substation out, so we are working on the problem in your village, it's just your substation's in the next village, and that's where we have to start to work out towards you. To set up the communications to find out what is helpful for us to provide for them uh, for additional information. 
We've also initiated a process, uh, a better process, I, th I think, of uh, communicating real time with municipal officials during the storm. And that's a, as simple as a, a call once or twice a day, a conference call that we'll hold with all the municipal officials uh, to update them specifically with LIPA status uh, in their area. There's also a hotline for municipal officials and they all, the know, all know the number. Uh, uh, they can call in and talk directly to a person if they have a particular problem or need to uh, alert us to something that needs a higher priority. And we set up that path of communications. Now, the municipal officials can always work through the incident command uh, structure that's set up. And that's if you're a village official, go through your town incident command, go through the county incident command, which is the county office for emergency management that are set up in these, in these times, and uh, deal with the, the representatives at the OEMs, the emergency management offices. And uh, we have a representative that sits right there for both counties and the city of New York. Uh, and, uh, and priorities that uh, elected officials have that the mayors have can go through the county OEMs and will get relayed right up through us uh, through that route also. Okay, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Um, I now LIPA's uh, infrastructure, right? You know, it's been pretty. I think it's probably aged and old. Is that correct? Well, that, that, or are that's, you that's an issue to? that, uh, I, and I would disagree with that. Uh, okay. That's an issue that many utilities face. Okay. Uh, we've been investing heavily in our infrastructure and updating it. Okay. Um, it's it's sort of hard to tell when you're in an outage, but. Uh, from a standpoint of reliability of the electric system, mm -hmm. uh, we are among the top in the nation for reliable uh, electric systems, and the top normally year in, year out in New York State. So, you know, we have a good robust system. Trees are, are the issue normally on a distribution, and we have a pretty robust tree trimming program. Mm -hmm. On the transmission side, we've been investing heavily mm -hmm. uh, for years in updating the transmission system. And that's why from a standpoint of electric power supply, mm -hmm. the generators are there, the cables off island to the mainland are there to bring power on, and the system is in place to, bring, to spread the power throughout Long Island through the transmission system. Mm -hmm. We have a certain amount of planned replacement we do of the system each year. Uh, there are aspects of the system that are that are a century old, mm -hmm. but still not at end of life. Uh, uh, electric systems, you know, have a very long life. A typical overhead transmission line can last easily last 100 years. Uh, underground distribution transmission line can easily last 100 years or more. So we don't replace things frivolously. We right. carefully monitor, monitor the status of the assets, the health of the assets. Uh, we have a robust maintenance program. As uh, they've come to end of life, we manage the end of life by either life extension or by way of uh, replacement, and we replace a certain number of our assets every year. Okay, so we are ready for next decade or something. We're very good. We're very we good very shape. Good. We, and we've been investing for a very long time in smart grid before you even had a name. Uh, we, we called it distribution automation at the time. Uh, you know, a few years ago, people started calling it smart grid. We've got a very highly automated distribution system, uh, more so than many utilities. Uh, we've got a very uh, robust back-end data communication system. Uh, as much as we are a transmission distribution company, uh, most people don't realize we're also very heavily involved in information systems. A lot of the major decisions we make are information systems decisions. We have everything from fiber optic communications to um, smart devices out in the field on the distribution lines, monitors, radio, wireless, uh, you name it, in the, in the IT world, we're in it. Uh, so, you know, that's all part of keeping the system up to date. So you depend on us? We depend very much <laughs> on the IT world. Yeah. Again, IT a lot world. of the decisions we make, the big decisions are IT decisions. IT, right, exactly, exactly. I agree with you. Uh, now, let's talk about the alternative energy. You know, I mean, LIPA is very much involved in uh, or has a lot of different programs, you know, to encourage alternative energy, you know. So can you tell us, like, what sort of uh, programs that you have? Sure. Uh, you know, we look we look at an alternative energy, we look at the renewables programs. Right. You know, what is a renew renewable energy source? So solar is the bit, by far the largest on Long Island and probably the most prevalent um, 
opportunity. Uh, wind is a great opportunity, less expensive than solar, but uh, everybody knows here on Long Island we just don't have a lot of land to do it. There are spot locations where it makes sense and, and, it, and it's available. So wind is less expensive than solar. Solar is a great opportunity. We have a great resource here. It's sunny most of the days of the year here, and uh, that's what we've been pushing. So we have residential and commercial rebate programs. Okay. The commercial rebate program includes uh, not-for-profits and has a higher rebate rate for not-for-profits. And uh, it's a simple matter of contacting us. Best way is through the web page, and uh, you have a representative come out, and we can tell a business or a residence what their opportunity is. One of our contractors will come out and do that and uh, start in the process. Mm -hmm. There are other opportunities for renewables. We just don't have many of them here on Long Island. We don't have hydroelectric sources. Uh, we don't have, for example, renewables as far as biofuels readily available to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we look heavily at the solar. Now, before going into the renewables programs, for businesses and residences alike, it is almost always less expensive to go into reduction of energy use first right. and that's to take advantage of our efficiency programs okay. so whether you're a large business small business medium-sized business or a residence we have a program that pretty much fits uh, giving you the ability to look at a series of opportunities by way of an energy audit uh, that we tell you what the opportunities are oftentimes for small businesses as simple as changing out to more efficient lighting we rebate that uh, pay a, a large portion of the cost of that, mm -hmm. and then from that day forward, your your bill is lower. And usually, those programs have a very very pa fast uh, payback for businesses. And it's a free energy audit from like right. The audits, the initial contact. assessments are audit are are free. Uh, and again, what we provide you with that assessment then is a, a list of opportunities. Right. You can choose to partake of them or not. And uh, you know, we tell you right there what we estimate the cost will be, and what we estimate the rebate will be, and what we estimate the payback period will be. So. So as a business, you can make a business decision. As a resident, you can see if that's the type of thing you want to get into. So a typical resident, like you know, four bedroom house. Sure. Uh, what will be the out of pocket cost? Well, it depends on it. So you know, we have we have everything from very old homes to very new homes, and some of the newer homes are already very efficient homes because they've been built to modern codes. But it's it's not unusual for us to say, look, your first opportunity is increased insulation right. in the roof attic, floors, windows, those types of things. And so part of the residential survey is the whole house test is done. Uh, Right there when we do the test, there's a certain amount of free work that the contractor will do that day. Uh, that will reduce the air infiltration in and out of your house by some amount. And then what's not free on that day, they'll tell you what, what, what the opportunity is, what the, what the cost might be as far as more insulation or sealing up your house better, sealing up the ducts and windows better, and then you can make a choice. So, uh, you know, I've seen estimates that get quite high, but, you know, you can look at things that are usually a couple, a few thousand dollars after the rebate. Uh, we'll usually, in many houses, uh, give you a fair bump in efficiency. So that both reduces your electric use in the summer with air conditioning if you have it, but it reduces your, then your heating use in the winter. And most people on, that, on Long Island uh, heat by either natural gas or oil. And so it also uh, reduces your heating use in the w in the winter. So it hits you all year round. Okay. Now you know mo our viewers are all like you know um, from South Asia, and uh, they we are all a minority basically. You know. So can you like obviously LIPA uses a lot of services and subcontractors and all that. So do you have any plans for utilizing uh, women and minority owned businesses? We have a very a very active program in that, and we're very interested in using minority uh, businesses, women owned businesses uh, even greater. As a matter of fact, we have statewide goals, as every state agency does, of trying to have 20% of our business be MWBE business. We hold seminars a few times a year to bring in new businesses, try to get them uh, acclimated to the New York certification process. For us uh, to count against our goal, it needs to be a New York certified business. And uh, so we try to lead people through that. We use other state agencies to work with us that do that every day to get people through the certification process. Almost all of our major procurements are up on our website. Uh, we use the state contract reporter and we have a very intensive list of all those good businesses that we've gathered up. We send out uh, announcements of those procurements to those businesses. Unfortunately, by default, a lot of our business is sort of big box uh, nationwide companies. For example, a transformer manufacturer. Right, right. 
There are only four or five big companies in the world that do that. It ends up being, and those are big spend items. But for the things that we can do locally with smaller businesses and MWB businesses, we certainly are interested in doing that. Uh, a lot of our procurements come through our service provider, National Grid. They're also active in that. They're right side by side with us at all these events to get people signed up to be on our mailing list and to, to try to help get them certified. Uh, so uh, we're very interested and very active. At the end of the day, though, we still are a competitive business. So we, we operate competitively, and I know nobody's looking for, for a, a, an unfair leg up here. Our job is to, is to get people up to the line where they can give us a good competitive uh, uh, bid on a, on a service and, and be qualified to do it, and then uh, you know be part of the competition. Right, now, uh, would you give any, or do you give any preference to a, a person who's paying LIPA or within LIPA territory or not? We're actually not allowed to. Uh, You're not allowed uh, to? We're not allowed to by our laws and regulations that we have to go by. But again, we can get them up to the starting line and get them up to the finish line of uh, having a good competitive bid that addresses the needs uh, so, that they c so that they have an opportunity to compete in the market. Uh, and that's be much better, obviously, than standing on the sidelines and waiting for the market to come to you. So we, we provide a helping hand in getting, it, getting uh, smaller businesses through the process mm -hmm. so that uh, you know, the opportunity is there. Okay, so with all equal, I mean, obviously, you know, LIPA customer, I mean, may have a better edge of getting well, it. I mean, I'm just, yeah, you know, being because, because selfish. We, and because we've gone through the effort there of, of uh, perhaps spending more time over a period of time describing our problems, right. our issues, and our needs, right. and a local business clearly can understand those better than right. a business who's not local. Yeah. Uh, from time to time, there are services where local is definitely a, a uh, advantage, where we have certain procurements where response time is part of the procurement. Mm -hmm. So clearly, if uh, an IT services is one of them, right. uh, a local company yeah. has a much better yeah. uh, opportunity right. of, of coming and responding on site to, a, say, a, a server right. problem than a company that's out of state and has, you know, can't even be here for 24 or 48 hours. So uh, by default, local companies do have advantage in many of the areas. A lot of the areas are in the field work we do of construction support, uh, landscape repair, roadway repair, uh, obviously areas where companies, uh, local companies by default have an advantage. Now, Governor Cuomo, you know, has asked LIPA to look at the uh, opportunity, you know, take an opportunity to increase the synergies and increase efficiencies uh, within LIPA. Uh, so, natural thing for us to do. Uh, I know it, it, it tends to be news when a state agency says, "Look, we need to take a serious top-to-bottom look at ourselves." You know, businesses do it all the time. Businesses stand back, say, "We've been operating this way for a time. Let's let's take a look and and see what we can do better." As a state agency, we straddle, and a retail business, we straddle both of those worlds. I think it's the natural thing for us to take a look at ourselves. We uh, naturally need to do it because we're changing service providers and contracts. Okay. We're going from National Grid to PSEG in 2014. Right. It's a different contract, different contract structure, has more synergy opportunities, I believe. Okay. So at the same time we look at that, we say, okay, then what are there in other realms of state government, the other place where we have a foot, in it and say, how can we, uh, is there anything we can, uh, can put together for synergy savings there? You know, the governor has been very straightforward in saying he wants to reduce the size of agencies in government, and I think this is a natural offshoot from that. Um, your f final message to the viewers of this show? Well, I think that what uh, I'd like the viewers to understand is, you know, LIPA is a group of very, a very small group, about 100 employees. We manage a lot of contracts. Uh, I mentioned right up front we're utility people. Uh, we're 24 by 7 people. Uh, we're work during our vacation uh, type of people. Uh, you know, and our job is to try to provide better service at a lower cost to our customers. And our, and our staff work very hard at that every day. We have a lot of challenges in front of us. I think we're in the process of addressing those with the update of our contract with our service providers, with looking at, at new generation resources, at a new contract for the legacy generation resources. Uh, probably over the past few years, we've gone through more business transformation, and the next year and a half or so to come, more business transformation than we ever have in our history. Customers are looking for change and difference at LIPA and want to know that we're managing the cost. So, uh, you know, that's what we're doing. We're not, we're not shirking from that responsibility, and, and we're going after it full force.
before we end, final question. Are you going to be from acting to real CEO soon? Well, I don't know the, the issue with that, you know, I, I, uh, or, the, or the timing of that. Uh, I'm doing both jobs now. Right. I've been doing it for just over two years. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, I feel very comfortable in the position. And, uh, you know, I think uh, under that leadership, we're, we're moving life in the right direction. So I'm always game for more opportunity. But uh, realistically, I'm doing the, the job as we speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, you can email me at rajmitv at gmail.com. Again, that's rajmitv at gmail.com. Until next time, see you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.